This is the easiest way to explain how training and adaptation works. Pretend your body is a car. You go out and you go drive. You come back to the shop, depending on how you drove that car, certain things might be worn down, broken apart, and the mechanic might repair that, those parts, those things that are worn down, but instead of just repairing them, it will make them better than they were before. So if you go out and do that same activity, it doesn't get worn down and broken down so much. So let's use that example. That car goes out and it drives and it goes off-roading. That car's suspension is going to be worked. The paint's going to be worn down. As a whole, the entire car is being used. But certain areas get worn down more than others. For example, when you go off-roading, it might challenge the suspension in a unique way. That car comes back to the shop, the mechanic works on the suspension, you fix it. Now let's say that car goes and drives 100 miles in one day. The car comes back to the shop, the tires appear to be more worn down than the suspension this time. So this time the mechanic makes the tires better. So next time you go and drive 100 miles, the tires aren't worn down as much. The suspension was worked, but not nearly as much as it was when it was off-road. Just like when it was off-roading, maybe the tires weren't worked as much. Now let's say you drive this car in a sandstorm. The paint gets ripped away. So next time you go bring the car back to the shop, you make sure you get paint that's going to be resistant to whatever sandstorm exists out there. So next time you're in a sandstorm, the paint doesn't you know, get washed away. Yes, the wheels were worked. Yes, the suspension was worked, but they weren't really stressed. So what's happening here in this example is your body is always working whenever you do something. It's going to operate as a whole. However, certain systems are going to be stressed more depending on the activity you do. If you go run a lot, while your cardiovascular system might be stressed in a certain way, much different than if you lift a lot. Certain muscles might be worked if you squat a lot and certain muscles might be worked if you sprint a lot. Yes, there are going to be similar muscles being worked, but the amount of stress applied to those muscles is going to be different. Now the mechanic is basically your internal system. Your internal system doesn't know you're going sprinting. It doesn't know you're going to go squatting. It just has metabolites that it responds to. Metabolites are the breakdown, the wear and tear. Just like if you go out and you drive in a sandstorm, it appears the wear and tear is most heavily done on the paint of the car. Or if you go off-roading, the suspension, this wear and tear sends signals to the body to repair those areas and those tissues. So if you're the mechanic and that person drives in a sandstorm only one time and only one time in 10 years, there's no need to spend a whole bunch of money and time trying to get paint and certain paint that is sand resistant, wear resistant, because that's anomalous. It's not typical we have that activity done. But if we keep doing that activity and we keep having wear and tear, well, then it probably makes a lot of sense to rebuild that to a level that's gonna be resistant to a sandstorm. Same thing with your body. You squat one time, you're not going to develop all the tissues related to squatting. You go sprint one time, you're not gonna develop all the tissues related to sprinting. It takes repeated, consistent stressors. The last thing is, is when you go out and do something, let's say you go and drive that car off-road, and you wear the suspension down, when that mechanic comes back and works on the suspension, if you go drive it the same amount off-road again, it's not going to be more worn down. The suspension's able to handle that. But if you go and drive even more than you had done before, you come back with more wear and tear, the mechanic is gonna rebuild your suspension, bigger and stronger, more durable. Same thing happens with your body. You go and sprint every day and you only sprint four times, your body is gonna get better at sprinting four times, but it's not necessarily going to build the capacity to be able to sprint 10 times. 
If you go run one mile, you're not gonna be great at running 40 miles. It just doesn't work that way. You have to progressively overload. You just lift 20 pounds on your deadlift for eternity. That's no overload. There is no signaling that there is stress. So stress is relative to the breakdown because again, I, the mechanic, can only respond to the metabolites that exist. So in this model, there's a couple things you wanna take away. One, it's the repeated stress over and over again that causes adaptation. It's the stress has to be consistent in nature. You're not just off-roading one day and in a sandstorm the next. It has to be progressive in nature. If you just off-roaded until your suspension broke, you need a new car. And lastly, your whole body's always working when you do these things, but certain areas are stressed more than others. It's specific. So with that in mind, when we think about training, we wanna make sure exercises are specific. We wanna make sure that the progression allows for overload. We wanna make sure that we are consistent with our training. We wanna make sure that our training is be able is done in a way that is repeated to allow for more than one stressor to be applied, but a multitude of stressors to be applied. So it's not just one time we go out and work out, but it's a consistency in which we work out. So a consistency in the type of stressor, but also a consistency in the number of times, the frequency in which we are applying stressors to the body. Lastly, but not least, and not really mentioned here, but is important is the mechanic only has so much energy to repair certain things. So an infinitesimal amount of work and wear and tear is not gonna in yield infinitesimal adaptation. You go and drive your car and you beat it up, the suspension, the wheels, the paint. Well, you can't fix it all in one day. It's gonna take a while. And you might not have enough money to fix it, so you're just out of luck. So you only have so much energy in your body to adapt. So you need rest and recovery, but also enough supplies to rebuild those. That's the easiest way I can explain the process of adaptation in a way that's actually much more complex and nuanced at the detail level, but from a macro picture is very simple and pretty consistent and easy to understand conceptually. So I hope that makes sense. I appreciate you guys listening as always. Thank you. To subscribe, take care. Feel free to leave a like.